Hello and welcome to conic sections. Conic sections include circles. Well, we know what a circle is. Ellipse, which is like a, a squished circle. And hyperbolas, which kind of look like parabolas, but they go in both directions. Um, and uh, these kind of are three related but independent topics here and they're not even functions so they're going to be a little bit weird they have x squareds and y squareds in their equations but uh, many students will be like why do you call them conic sections so let's look at that for a minute here is a double inverted cone so you have a cone and when you slice through it with a plane depending on the angle you'll get a circle or you'll get a squish circle or if you go exactly parallel to one of the sides you get a parabola and if you cut through both edges, go more than parallel, and you start getting this, that's where you get this hyperbola type thing. So all of these shapes, and we already did the parabola one uh, with the y equals the x squared, um, they're all created by cutting a plane and taking a section of a cone. So that's why these guys are called conic sections. Just a little background there before we start into it. So we start with circles. One of the easiest things to see about circles is when you graph something like x squared plus y squared equals 9. Now without any knowledge or background on it, uh, we look at this and we say, okay, what does that look like on a graph? And we can get a few really easy points. For example, let's do the intercepts. If x is 0, so if you put a 0 right in here, y squared equals 9. We've solved something like that millions of times. y squared equals 9, uh, that's 3 or negative 3. Now notice that we are definitely not in a, a function here. 0, 3 and 0, negative 3 uh, are both answers. All right, so the second one, if we stick in 0 for y, then x squared is 9. So we get a 3 or a negative 3. And so this is where we get this type of a thing and you're like oh my word and with the x squared and the y squared it goes very smoothly into this right here and you get a circle isn't that fancy yeah and the radius of the circle is this three so you start to see the relationship between that that the radius is going to be a three and the center is right here let's look at another one make sure we can see what's going on if i took x squared plus y squared equals say 49 can you see that if I stuck in 0 uh, for x, y would be plus and minus 7. So it would be up here at positive 7, negative 7. And then if I stuck in 0 for y, the same thing happens with x. And I get these four points right here and the circle with the radius. Oh, that didn't look too bad. So the radius is going to equal 7. So what if I did something that looked a little bit different, like x uh, squared plus y squared uh, equals, say, 10, something that doesn't come out nice. Well, when we graph it, x is 0, y would have to be plus or minus square root of 10. So we're coming up to the square root of 10 up there and down to the negative square root of 10. And same thing will happen on the x. It's perfectly symmetric with regards to these two things. Look at that. That's awesome. Perfect circle right there. So the radius would be the square root of 10. Okay, with that in mind, uh, circles become very easy. You're like, oh, there's the radius, and you draw the circle. Back in parabolas, we had a graphing way of doing things um, where if we took y equals x squared, it was a nice little parabola and it looked like that. You might remember that. You remember what happens if we did like x minus 3 squared? It moved the this thing over opposite of that to the right 3, so it went like this. Well, it's going to happen here as well with circles. If we do something like x minus 3 altogether squared plus y squared equals say 49, it's going to take this circle right here with that minus 3 right next to it we have we're going to start instead of from 0 0 we're going to move everything over 3 so we're going to be over here at 0 3 and go up 7 down 7 and watch we can actually do that if you stick in an x and y chart x and y uh, stick in 3 for x you'll notice that 3 minus 3 is 0 and this guy is now 0 so y has to be plus or minus 7 so we now get the point 3 7 and the point 3 negative 7 oh yeah look at that that's nice now if we stick in uh, 
this one's a little bit different. So if we're going to go radius 7 from 3, we're down here at negative 4. Um, 0, nope, negative 4, 0. There we go. And up from here, 7, that's what, 10? Up 7, that'd be 10, 0. Let's see if that actually really works. If we put 0 in here, then we have the equation x minus 3 squared equals 49. If we square root it, we get x minus 3 equals plus or minus 7. So if we add 3 to plus or minus 7, we get 10 and negative 4. Yeah, so really, you don't need to go through all of that work if you can see that, oh, if we're just moving the whole circle, this whole circle, that way to 3, 0 is where the center starts. So let's try one where we move both the x and the y. x minus 3 squared plus y minus 5 squared equals 49. Okay, so this is taking this circle up here with radius equals 7, and we're moving it 3 to the right and 5. Now it's right next to the y, so it moves opposite of what it looks like. So it moves it up 5. So on this graph, you'd be over 3, up 5. That's our center point. He's actually not part of the circle, but that's our center point. And if we stick in 3 here, we've got to go plus or minus 7 right up here. So up 7. So this gives us 3, 12. Good. And down, we got 3, negative 2. Cool. Now if we go from here over 7, we, are, we were at 3, so we're over at 10, up 5. And back 7, and we're at negative 4. 5. And there's our circle right there with four points graphed. Isn't that kind of cool? So the basics of it, and then this guy just slides it one way or the other. It's kind of cool. The formula that you're going to see here is that we have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So the radius comes over here is squared, and then if these are perfect squares, it's awesome. It's cool. This has center hk because it was moved over h, up k, and then radius r. And so it becomes a very quick and nice formula. Let's see a couple on how we can do this. So if we had something like x minus 5 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 121. That means we are at the point 5, negative 3. So 5, negative 3. Let's write that right there. And the radius is 11. So if we go out here 11, that is our circle. And we could write these points if we wanted to, graph them and know exactly what those points are. Um, this would be up 11, so that would be like 16, negative 3. And this would be, uh, ooh, shoot, what is that? That's over 5. From negative 3 up 11, that's 8. 5, 8. Yeah, and this would be 5, negative 14, going straight down 11. And this one is um, oh, negative 6, negative 3. Is that right? If you go straight down from here, you're still at negative 3. And yeah, you'd be at negative 6. And you could do this. You could actually write an xy chart where you stuck in... Um, negative 3 for y, and you'll notice negative 3 plus 3 eliminates the y term, and then you would solve this. Square root both sides, and you get plus or minus 11, and add 5 to it. And so you'd add 5 to negative 11, get negative 6, add 5 to positive 11, and you get 16. So these points actually work, but if you know this shortcut, oh, it's a sweet thing. Now sometimes they'll give it to you like this, where they have squared plus 8x plus y squared minus 14y equals 3. Something like that. And you look at this and you're like, oh shoot, I don't know how to do it. It's not written in the right form. If only it were written in these perfect squares, it'd be so easy to graph it. Well, congratulations, you know how to write this in the right form. Do you remember how to complete the square? Yeah, you do. If you think of a little space right here, complete the square on this so you can make a perfect square and a perfect square. What do you have to add right here? Well, half of 8 is 4 squared is a 16. 
Look at how handy it was. We just made x plus 4 squared. Got to add it to both sides, though. How about the y? What's half of 14 is a minus 7 squared. You have to add 49 to both sides. Notice that we just made x plus 4 squared and y minus 7 squared. And we had to add those to the other side. So we actually equal uh, 3 plus 16 is 19 plus 49 is a 68, it looks like. Good, good, good. Um, so do we know now? Yeah. We're like, oh, got that. The center is negative 4, 7. Negative 4, 7. That's the center. And the radius is uh, square root of 68. So I don't know. That's like a little bit bigger than 8 or something. So it'll look about like that. So these four points look a little bit weird. It would be uh, negative 4 plus the square root of 68. This is like if you punch that into decimal, that's... Uh, like 8 point something. So negative 4 plus 8 point something would be positive 4 point something. And you're up at the level 7. And then so on. Ooh, that simplifies. That's actually 2 squared to 17. So that's pretty cool. Let's write that as 2 squared to 17. Or you could punch it into the calculator and get your four point, uh, 8 point whatever. So anyway, these four points will have square roots on them, but we know exactly where they are. That's pretty slick. That's pretty slick. Now something else I wanted to point out to you on, say, this one, is when you're writing an equation of these, this equation is actually, look at it, it's an a squared plus a b squared equals c squared. So I want to show you something that happens on these particular things. If you take an x, y point here, and you draw a right triangle in here, I want to show you how you just write the equation of this. The distance between this x and this 5 is x minus 5. I mean, think about it. We did this in slope. You take x2 minus x1. That gives you this. And a y2 minus y1. This is y minus 3. And if you write the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, you get x minus 5 squared plus y plus 3. Oops, y plus 3, because you're taking y minus a minus 3. y plus 3 squared equals the hypotenuse, which is 11 squared. And that works for every single point all the way around the circle. You will get this right triangle. That's why this is the equation. It's a wonderful connection to the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, go ahead and give circles a try. To the boards! Here are some problems for you to give a shot to. Uh, pause the video and then resume when you're ready to see the answers. Great, welcome back. Number one, it says to graph this. Well, x squared plus y squared equals, um, yeah, look at that. Uh, this is a nice one. It has center 0, 0, and radius is going to equal 6. So 6, 0, 0, 6, negative 6, 0, and 0, negative 6, and we get Shazam. Oh, I missed that guy right there. A circle. There we go. Great. Number two. Ooh, this one's not in the right form, so we're going to have to do a little fancy footwork here. Uh, complete the square on this one. So half of 4 is 2 squared. Have to add 4 to both sides. Half of 8 is negative 4 squared. Have to add 16 to both sides. So we now have, notice what this guy is right here. x squared plus 4x plus 4 is x plus 2 squared. y squared minus 8x plus 16 is y minus 4 altogether squared. We added these numbers in to complete the square and now we have a perfect square there. Equals uh, 11 plus 4 plus 6 is 21. So this means we have uh, center HK and radius R. So center negative 2, 4 right there. Uh, that's the center. Uh, let's write that out, negative 2, 4. And then the radius is the square root of 21. Ooh, what is that? Like as a decimal, that's like uh, 4.5 or something. So it's going to go down about to there, just barely past going up 4, and over about there, and up and back. So this is our perfectly round, beautiful circle with the square root of 21. 
Yeah, that's pretty cool. Look at that. If you wanted to graph these points, you could call them, uh, let me see, this would be negative 2 plus the square root of 21, uh, 4. Yeah. And then this guy would be, let me see, he's back at negative 2, and he's up 4 plus the square root of 21. So yeah, you can see exactly where these points are. It takes a little bit of, I mean, it doesn't look very nice, but you could do it. All right, the last one. Write the equation of the circle with 5, negative 2. Write the equation. Oh, we got to write it. We got to go backwards here. So we have center, 5, negative 2. So this is our h, and this is our k. So we have x minus 5 squared plus y plus 2. So that's minus the minus 2 squared equals um, but it goes through 7, 7. We don't know what the radius is. So let's do this just really quick. 5, negative 2, and it goes through 7, 7. Here's the point, 7, 7. How could we get the distance between these two? And that's 5, negative 2. Well, exactly like what we did before with the Pythagorean theorem. So from 5 to 7 is 2, and from negative 2 to 7 is 9. So we would do, and let's call this our, that's going to be the radius of our circle. If the circle it goes around like this, oh, that was a pretty good circle. Um, if it goes around like that, that's the radius of our circle if the circle passes right through there. So we get 2 squared plus 9 squared equals the radius squared. 4 plus 81 is 85 equals the radius squared. Square root, the radius is going to be square root of 85. We would do a plus and minus normally, but the radius can't really be a negative number. That doesn't make any sense. So we stick that guy squared right up here. Yes, excellent. That's, that is our r squared is right there. Notice r squared goes right over here, not the radius, the radius squared. The other thing you could have done, and this is kind of slick, once you get this point, once you know where the center is, being able to stick this in for x and stick that point in for y better come out to be 85. Let's double check. 7 minus 5 is 2, squared is 4. 7 plus 2 is 9, squared is 81. 4 plus 81 is 85. Yeah, notice we just recreated this triangle, Pythagorean theorem. That's exactly how it works. Great, now you can do the circles section of your homework. Okay, now we're on to ellipses. So these are circles that have been squashed. Circles that have been squashed. And you wonder, like, what does that mean? Well, you'll notice with circles we had a nice x squared and a y squared. Well, this still has x squareds and y squareds, but it has something like 9x squared plus 25xy squared equals 225. Now, if you were to look at this, these are nice, perfect square numbers. This is like... This is like uh, 15 is a perfect square here, and uh, this is 5, and this is 3. But how does that all work, and what happens with that? Um, well, we could do a little xy chart, just like we did with the circles to start off with, and say, okay, so what if x was 0? What do we get? Well, let's solve it. You get 25y squared equals 225. If we divide both sides by 25, you get y squared equals 9. Huh, y is plus or minus 3, so 0, 3, and 0, negative 3. Now, the kicker is when you start putting in zeros for y and see what happens, you get uh, 25y squared, that goes away, you get 9x squared equals 225. Uh, divide by 9 and you get x squared equals 25. Now it doesn't always happen that they just switch places, but fairly often. Um, x squared equals 25, you get 5 and negative 5. And this is where you start to realize, oh, something just happened here. When we graph this guy, we look at it, you get 0, 3, and 0, negative 3 is like this. And 5, 0 and negative 5. Now some of the circles I drew were not exactly round, but you can tell that this guy is definitely not round at all. He's a squish circle. This is an ellipse. And so it doesn't have a radius. Well, it turns out that ellipses have little foci right in here. And it's like if you took a string and stretched it up and stretched it out like this, that that string going like this, which has length 10, actually, 
kind of a fascinating thing here that the the string actually has length 10. Um, if you were to do this uh, and just trace a pencil around that string, so here we've got to find the foci. Now, this is a process that they that you could do on every ellipse, but they've actually found a form where you can look at it and see what's going on with the ellipse and which side got squished how far. Because this is pretty far, hard. You know, the y's are down at 3 and negative 3, and the x's are down at 5 and negative 5, and you're like, ah, that's kind of hard to tell. Um, so this is what they do. They divide everything by this guy on the other side. So if they divide everything so that there's a 1 over here, it turns into this. Uh, let's write it here, 9x squared over 225 plus 25y squared over 225 equals 1. Now simplify this, 9 divided by 225 gives an x squared over 225 uh, plus a y squared over 9 equals 1. Now I'll show you why this is so easy to see. If you let x be 0, then can you see that y has to be plus or minus 3 to make it come out to be 9 over 9? Yeah, this number becomes, you just look at that, and it's the square root of this is how far the y's have to move. The square root of 25 is how far the x's have to move. And it puts the numbers right next to the, the variables that they affect. So that's kind of cool. So if we did something very similar to this, uh, let's do another one down here. And we do, okay, let's try... Um, x squared over uh, 25, let's try that, and plus, let's do y squared over like 169 equals 1. Then we see and say, okay, what happens on this one? Well, if x is 0, y has to be the square root of 169, which is 13 and negative 13. So we're clear up at the top and clear down at the bottom. And we would label those points, 0, 13, and uh, 0, negative 13. That's cool. And now let's do the other side. If the y is 0, x has to be plus or minus 5 in order to make this come out to equal 1. So these are kind of tight in here, like this, and it's a long, skinny parabola. So 5, 0, and negative 5, 0. And it looks something like this. Oh, I like it. I like it. Now, we mentioned that the foci are in there. So we don't have a center or radius to deal with, but these are the foci off of which we would get this cool thing. Well, this is what happens. Okay, now watch very carefully that this length right here from the furthest tip down to the center, this guy right here is the same length as this right here. That's kind of interesting to see, and it works both ways. You can take this long leg right here and slide that guy up, and that guy slides in. This comes from this being the total distance of which you would trace the pencil around. So if you draw it to that middle spot, it's the same as going from here up to there. So it's kind of cool. So this hypotenuse is 13, and we know that this guy is 5. Do you think we could find out how far the foci are? Yes, we can. We've got 5 squared. Uh, plus uh, this foci squared, b squared, equals c squared, this 13. And so b squared is 169 minus 25 is 144. So the b would be a plus or a minus. Square root of 144 is 12. So the foci are at 0, 12 and 0, negative 12. Cool. Let's see if we could find the foci up here. So let's uh, let's draw this one right there. And how far out was this? It was 5. So that's a 5. And this guy was 3. So call this b. We get 3 squared plus b squared equals 5 squared. Uh, 9 from 25, that's b squared equals 16. b equals 4, plus or minus 4. So the foci right there are negative 4, 0 and 4, 0. Cool. I like it. I like it. Let's try another one. x minus 3 squared over 64 plus y plus 7 squared over 289 equals 1. Now when it's equal to 1 for ellipses, this is genius. This is the way we can tell because that means the x's and y's go 8 
and I mean the X's go 8 plus or minus and the Y's are going to go the square root of 289 which is 17 on the dot that's nice that's nice so let's draw a big graph here and see how it works now this minus 3 and this plus 7 might freak you out until you remember what we did with circles we're going to kind of ignore them except everything is going to be slide slid 3 negative 7 so this point 3 negative 7 right here that's kind of our base of operations so everything got slid that direction but now once we do that we can kind of ignore them so 3 will just will go 8 on the x's 17 on the y's and then we'll find our foci all right so let's do it let's the x's go plus or minus 8 so we go out here 8 and good and go back 8 now it's a good chance right now just to write what these points are if you go 8 and 3 that's uh, 11 negative 7 is that point and this guy back 8 from 3 is a negative 5 negative 7 good okay so now let's go on the y's we go up 17 so we are at uh, let me see 3 um, up 17 from negative 7 is 10 that's the point 310 up there and then down uh, the same distance 17 that gives us 3 negative 24 oh look at that these are actually now I'll try to draw a perfect ellipse but you may have noticed that uh, I'm not as good as that as I wish I were okay there we go uh, looks uh oh that looked bad there we go much better okay so there's your ellipse and there are the four points that it hits now we know that the foci are along this major axis the long axis somewhere out here somewhere down there and the next thing is just to find those so let's remember that this distance from the center is the exact same as that distance to that middle point we could draw both of those but if you recall this forms a right triangle and we know this guy is 8 and we know this long guy is 17 and it will always turn out that the bigger one of these two is the c in a squared plus b squared equals c squared so we'll be doing 8 squared plus b squared equals 17 squared so 289 minus 64 b squared equals 225 square root of 225 is 15. so that means we're going to go up 15 yeah there we go so we're going up 15 to let me see 3 8 and down 15 to 3 negative 22 and those are the foci and yeah the the whole distance 17 here and 17 here that means every single point drawn all the way around the distance between this point out to here and this point down to here is a total of 34 amazing amazing uh, the whole major axis is 34. So not that you'll need to know that, but you will need to be able to find the foci. Great, let's try one more, and then we'll turn you loose to do a couple on your own. All right, so here's the one from the textbook that's about as ugly of an ellipse you can see. You can tell it's an ellipse because the x squared and the y squared have different factors in front of it, so that means one of them got squished more than the other one, so it is not a perfect circle. So let's see what we can do here. First of all, we need it into that nice happy formula let's let's write what the that this formula looks like so we know what we're headed for so it's an x minus h squared plus a y minus k squared same thing uh, divided by the things that'll move so like um, like an a squared here and a c squared there depending on which one's longer uh, it's the c the c could be over here the a over there and it's always equal to 1. So that's kind of where we're headed for. So let's do it piece at a time here. Um, we've got to complete this square. We've got to factor out this 100. So we have x squared minus 6x. Let's leave a little space so we know what we're going to add to it. And then take out a 36 so we can do the y's. This is y squared plus uh, 288 divided by... Uh, 36 that's 8 y and then there's a little we'll leave a little space there equals 21 24 okay so here's the here's the completing the square thing we've got to do 
uh, half of 6 is 3. So we're going to try to create an x minus 3 squared. So we have to have a plus 9. Now realize we don't just didn't just add 9 to this side. We added 100 times 9. So that's adding 900 is what we just did. Make sure you're okay with that. We just added 9 in here, which really added 900 to this side. So we had to add 900 over there. All right, on this one, we have to take half of 8 is 4 plus uh, 4 squared is 16. So we have to add 16 to both sides. Let's make sure we get our calculator out and we do that one right. What's 36 times 16? Uh, that's 576. So we actually added 576 over on this side. So let's write this out now. We have y plus 4 squared equals. And so what do we really have there? 576 plus 900 plus 2124. Enter. That's 3600. Okay. Next, we got to get it equal to 1 to turn it into this beautiful form where we can do everything from. So let's do that. Let's divide everything by 3600, divide by 3600, divide by 3600. Good. And so then, what's nice about this, oh, we forgot that 6 in there. We didn't factor out a 36. It's we only factor out a 3 there. Yeah, factor out a 36 out in front. So again, we had to add these numbers. So that 16 was 36 times 16 gave us 576. And that 9 was really 100 times 9, which was 900. So when we divide all these, what do we have now? Well, those cancel. And we get x minus 3 over 36. Oops, perfectly squared. Uh, this one, the 36 cancels. And we're left with 100. So we get plus y plus 4 over 100. And yeah, those numbers did switch. They don't always do it, but uh, the makers of these problems often have those numbers, so they switch. So it comes out to be exactly 1 nicely. Doesn't always happen, but go through the process to make sure you get the right numbers down there. So now we realize what we have. We have the center 3, negative 4. Cool. Let's put that in. So 3, negative 4 is about right there. So I'm going to label this guy, even though he's actually not part of the ellipse. That's good. So uh, on the x, uh, let's write this, neg uh, 3, negative 4. That's kind of the center here. Let's label him in there. Good. Uh, he's the center. Now the x goes plus and minus 6. So it tells us that on the x direction, this way, uh, we subtract 6, and we add 6. Oops, negative 4. There we go, 9, negative 4. So that gives us negative 3, negative 4, and 9, negative 4 right there. So instead of labeling them right here, I'll just uh, label them up there. And on the y's, this is kind of nice to do it this way. You're going to go plus and minus 10, so it's going to be 3. When you add 10, you get a 6, and when you minus 10, you get negative 14. That'll be like up there and down there. Good. And I'll draw that perfect potato shape again. There we go. And then the only thing we have left are the foci. Now, you can tell the foci are going to be along this y-axis because y is bigger. If it was squished the other way, it would be along the x-axis. So let's put that in, put that in. And then I like to draw this the triangle just so I know what's going on. So this longest axis of 10 is the c. And then this guy is, which was 6, and then we just got to find that one. So put it as b. So 6 squared plus b squared equals 10 squared. Um, that's b squared equals 100 minus 36 is 64. So b equals a plus or minus 8. So it's right up here and right down there, which is along the y-axis. So the foci are going to be this plus 8, so 3 4 and minus 8 which is 3 negative 12 yeah and there you go that's the example now you get a chance to do some on your own to the boards All right, so here it is. You get a chance to do these on your own uh, go and graph them label four points and the foci 
go ahead and pause the video and write these down, do them, and when you're ready, hit resume. All right, welcome back. Hope you had a good chance to try these. On this one right here, the center is going to be a 0, 0. We realize, let's write this up here, We the x minus h squared uh, and the y minus k squared. That's going to be our center. And then over like a squared and over c squared equals 1. So that's what we're shooting for. And so let's, let's look at this. So we're just at 0, 0. So this is nice. This is we're all going to go from the center of the ellipse here. So the x's go plus and minus 8. The y's go plus and minus 10. So this is 8, 0, uh, negative 8, 0, uh, 0, 10, and 0, negative 10. Great. There are four points, and there's our graph. Ooh, perfect. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Great looking shape there. And then uh, we need to find the foci. They look like they'll be along the y side of things. Uh, because that is the major axis and go ahead and draw that out to that center point and this is the same distance as this big one so this is a 10 right there and this guy is an 8 so this we're going to have uh, 8 squared plus b squared equals 10 squared which you notice we're using these two numbers again 64 plus b squared equals 10 squared or 100 let's just write 100 there Subtract 64, we get b squared equals 36. b is plus or minus 6. So we get a plus 6 here. So this guy has to be 0, 6. And this is 0, negative 6. You'll notice this one isn't squished a lot. Uh, it's out 8 and up 10. So there you go. All right, let's try the next one. Ooh, this is a big, long one. Let's try to complete the square so it looks pretty. So we take the, out the 25, and we get x squared plus, uh, I better pull that calculator out and see what we got here. Uh, 350 divided by 25. That's 14. So this is a 14x. Let's leave a space to complete this square. Plus 169 uh, y squared minus, ooh, ha, not doing that one in my head, 13. 1552 divided by 169. Hope it comes out nice. 8, good. 8y. Eight uh, leave a space. Equals 296. All right. With the orange, I'm going to complete the square. So here, half of 14 is 7. Squared is 49. So we have to add 49 to both sides. Let's see what that is on the other side. This is 25 times 49 is what we actually just added to this side. So we have to do the same thing to the other side. 25 times 49 is we actually have a plus 12, 25 over here. All right, good. And what number do we have to stick in here? Half of 8 is 4. 4 squared is 16. So we have to add 16 in there, which is really, if you were to redistribute that thing, what number we really added to that side is 169 times 16. And what does that equal? 2704 plus 2704. So what is what do we have on that other side right now? 2704 plus 1225 plus 296. And we get 4225. So when we get that one, let's do this. So this whole thing is going to equal 4225. All right. Uh, and let's write this out. We now have 25 x plus 7 squared plus 169 times uh, y minus 4 squared. Do you see how powerful that is to be able to add that number in so we can write it as a perfect square? Okay, so we got to get it equal to 1. So divide everything by 42, 25. Divide by 42, 25. And divide by 42, 25. Okay, let's see what this cancels out to. Um, I'm going to do it the other way. Divide that by 25 and see what number ends up on the bottom. Excellent. They did exactly switch places. So 25 over 4225 20, simplifies. So we have x plus 7 squared over 169 plus uh, we just found out that this was 25 times 169. So that'll cancel and leave y minus 4 squared over 25 equals 1. All right, so our graph right down here. 
Now our center, let's write them all out here. Center is negative 7, 4. Okay, so our points are on the x, we go 13 in both directions. That's the square root of 169 is 13. So we go down 13, so it's negative 24, and up 13, so that's 6, 4. And on the y's, we go 5, plus and minus. So starting from the center, we would go down 5, that'd be a negative 1, and up 5, negative 7, 9. So if we graph these, um, negative 24 is going to be about right here. Negative 7, 4 is going to be about right there. And 6, 4 is going to be about right there. Okay. Negative 7, negative 1 is about there. And negative 7, 9 is then it's going to be up in the positive. So we zoomed out so we could get clear down to that point right there. So let's see if we can draw a little bit nicer. Oh, I missed the point. My goodness. Oh, but that's not too bad. Look at that. Now you can tell that there's our graph. There's our four points. So once you get it into this form, it actually comes out really nice. And then here are our foci. So I'm going to draw this guy so we get the right triangle. And we know that this was a 5 and that this long axis was a 13. So we now have a uh, 5 squared plus b squared equals 13 squared. So we get b squared equals 169 minus 25 is 144. b is going to be plus or minus 12. So yeah, we get a 12 right here. So that means the foci are going to be, um, if you go back 12 on the x-axis, so we'll go back to negative 19, 4, and up 12, be to a positive 5, 4. So you're just taking this x value and going down 19 and up, I mean, sorry, down 12 and up 12 to negative 19 and 5. There you go. Nice job. Those are pretty tough problems. Give them a shot on your homework now. You're prepared. All right, we're now to the final one, the hyperbolas. Now, the hyperbolas are just a little bit different. Uh, you'll see what happens in just a minute. They're, we're, they're both going to have an x squared and a y squared, but in this case, there's a minus on one of the y squareds. And that's that's kind of weird. So I'm going to write it much like we had with the ellipses, where 1 is going to be the, the prime thing that we're going to get over here. It'll tell us exactly how far the x's and y's go in a certain direction. So let's write that out. So we have something like x squared over 9 minus y squared over 16 equals 1. Now, this is going to be the proper form that's going to help you a lot, but I want you to see what happens from the very get-go. If we were to do this xy chart right here, um, and we stick in y is 0, that's nice. This part goes away perfectly fine. We x is 3 and negative 3. 0, that's a negative 3. Oh, wow, that's good. Okay, so let's put this on here. x is going to be a 3 and a negative 3. Now, what what happens that's really weird is that this negative sign, if we put in 0 for x, uh, let's actually work this out. 0 over 9, 0, so we get negative y squared over 16 equals 1. Negative y squared equals 16, or y squared equals negative 16. I think some of you can see where this is going. When we square root both sides, we get y equals plus or minus the square root of negative 16, which is imaginary. Yep, that guy showed up. This is imaginary. There are no x-intercepts. And you're like, uh, what do we do? Well, this imaginary number does have an impact. So plus or minus 4, I want you to come up here 4 and draw a little circle. Now what it actually does, oop, let's draw it down at negative 4 there, good. What it actually does, this is, this is not we have no x-intercepts, so I drew this open circle. This 4, actually, the ratio from the 3 to the 4, has an impact on the graph. With hyperbolas, you will only be asked to graph two points, and these are the two points. Here's what happens with the rest of it. There is a rectangle that gets made by where, that, where this imaginary point would have been if it were real and you draw x's through it. 
Uh, there we go. Draw an X straight down through there. Good. And this is what happens. The 3 to 4 ratio between the X squareds and the Y squareds causes this to be an asymptote, these lines that we just drew. So we start from the real point and we head up like this. And we head down like that. Right along these asymptotes. And this is the only way to graph it. You just go like that and you're like, oh, so we have two points and we have the asymptotes. So it's crucial that you have the points 3, 0 and negative 3, 0 and you have the asymptotes. Now I do have to tell you about this one. Oh, so this point, this line, we're going to actually write what this line is because as x goes off to infinity, the y's that focus on this are uh, along the line. This has slope, let me see, up 4 over 3. Oh, let's write that correctly, 4 over 3x. And this guy is y equals negative 4 thirds x. So the, it actually does have a, uh, a big bearing, this 4 does, even though we don't graph imaginary points on our, our x and y graph. What happens here is there's a foci, focus, behind each one of these curves. And it turns out that the difference to every point remains the same. So this guy minus that, and that minus that, and that minus that will always be the same. So it has a common difference where ellipses actually had a common sum. You won't have to worry about that, but you can just tell that the foci that they bend around are right here. So the question is, how do we find them? Well, you see this, this uh, hypotenuse right here of this right triangle, where you have three and four. This box gives us a lot of information. We went three out, and then the box went four up, so we got the slope of the line. And then this guy, actually the hypotenuse falls down to here. So this distance up here is the same as the foci. So those are two of the same distance, which I think is amazing. Because look, we have a right triangle, three and four. And so on ellipses, the two numbers that you're given are the two legs of the triangle, and you have to find the longest one. So in this case, we do 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared, which in this case, we get 9 plus 20, 16 is 25 equals c squared. c is going to be plus or minus 5. So the foci here are 5, 0 and minus 5, 0. Cool. All right, so let's try another one. All right, let's do another one that looks kind of like this, and uh, then we'll do a big one all on one page before we let you go to the boards. So y squared over 576 minus x squared over 49 equals 1. Okay, so let's think about what's going on. First of all, they're switched in order because of the minus sign, and the minus sign really does flip out. You'll notice that the y's are now the real points. So the real points on here are going to be, uh, what's the square root of 576? Punch that in your calculator and you should get a 24. So on the real points, you get 0, 24 and 0, negative 24. We're going to zoom out a bit so we can see them. Now the imaginary points are going to be on the x-axis, plus and minus 7. So they're going to be kind of close in there. So here's our box. Yeah, there we go. Let's draw that box. Good. And then it gives us these asymptotes. So we actually have our two points, which are 0, 24, and uh, 0, negative 24. There's our two points. And this box gives us our asymptotes. So you'll notice this line here, starting at 0, 0, has a slope of 24 sevenths, rise over one run. So the asymptotes are y equals 24 sevenths x. That's that line headed with a positive slope. And the other one has a negative. y equals negative 24 sevenths x. So we already have all of this and we haven't even graphed it yet. Look at that. So we start with the real points and we go there and we head out to these lines. So that's what it looks like. There we go. Good. And the last thing we need to do is find the foci. Now the foci you'll see are behind the curve. So in this case they're on that major axis 
but they could have been on this minor axis. They actually, it's behind the curves is where these foci are. And so we've got to just find out how far it is out there. And the big secret is that they are this hypotenuse of this right triangle. That hypotenuse will fall right down to that guy. So we know that this is 24, we know that that is 7, and we have the Pythagorean theorem 7 squared plus 24 squared equals this c squared. And so what do we have? Uh, 49 plus 576, and we're using those two numbers as the two legs of the triangle, different than the ellipse, and that equals uh, c squared. So that's 625 equals c squared, so c equals 25. So the foci are up 25 and down 25, so we get 0, 25, and 0, negative 25. Excellent! There we go. Okay, time for a big example with completing the squares and everything. All right, so here it is. This is one out of the textbook, so we'll we'll have a good reference for you if you need to look back at it. So it says graph. Notice we only have two points. Label the foci and label the asymptotes. All righty, and uh, with hyperbolas, we need to make sure they look kind of like the ellipses. X minus h squared uh, minus y minus k squared, and then the numbers that they're over are the a and the b. It's not the a and the c and then a squared plus b squared equals c squared equals 1. So let's shoot for this so we can just move it hk. Now the y's might be in front of the, the minus sign and that would have it go the other way. So let's complete the square first and then see where we go from there. So 64 we get x squared plus uh, that looks like 4x uh, and let's leave a space and then minus 225. Now notice we're taking out minus 225, so we're left with y squared. Now if we take it a minus 225, that's going to give us a minus 10y. Leave a space equals 19,769. Woo, big numbers here. Don't know exactly where that guy's going. Okay, let's get our orange and complete the square. Half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So we actually are adding 4. But if we were to distribute that out, we're actually adding 256 to both sides. Make sure you're okay with that. We added 256 and then factored the 64 out. And that's where we got that one. So here we're going to half of 5, half of 10 is 5, squared is 25. So we're adding 25 to this side. And, ooh, what is that? We have negative 225 times 25 gives us... We are actually adding a negative 56, 25 to both sides. We added 25, but if you distribute it, we actually added a negative 56, 25 to both sides. So on the other side, what do we actually have? Let's get that calculator back out. So we have that plus 256 plus 19,769. So we end up with 14,400 on this side. So that's the number we're going to divide by. So here we have a 64 times x plus 2 squared minus 225 times y minus 5 squared. Look at that completing the square. Come back to help us out. That's nice. Now how do we get it equal to 1? Well, we divide by 14,400. If there's any justice in the cosmos, that will be uh, 64 times 225, 14,400. So let's see, 14,400 divided by 64, and hope it's 225. Oh, that's sweet. Life is smiling off on, on us. So we get x plus 2 squared over 225 minus y minus 5 squared over 64, and that equals 1. Cool. We now have it. Boy, that was a lot of work to get down to this. But now let's look at it. So the center, let's write it over here. The center is negative 2, 5. That's going to be the center of it. That's not actually on the hyperbola. That's kind of our reference point because every, it was just, it's like using these numbers, but then slide them negative 2, 5. So let's put this down. Let's do a graph right here. Good. Okay, so 
Um, we're going to be going, looks like this is 15 on the x's, and they're the real numbers. So let's go ahead and do that so we can see what they are. So if we go down 15, we have negative 17, 5. If we go up 15, we have 13, 5. So this is on the x's. We're going real numbers now, negative 17, 5, and 13, 5. These are the actual points. Good. So negative uh, 17, 5 is going to be about right there. And 13, 5 is going to be about right there. And negative 2, 5, I'm just going to put him in the center anyway, because that's an important point there. Okay, so those are actual points. Now, on the y value, it's 8 and negative 8. But remember, these are the imaginary ones. So you go up 8, and where it's not on the graph, down 8, and it's not on the graph. But we do form the box. And the box just helps us to get our asymptotes. So here we go. Let's see if we can do this. So the asymptotes go right through that center point. Good. And right up through that center point. Right. Good. So we now know. So here are real points. Here are real points. Now let's find. Um, Oh, let's graph it. Let's see what we got here. Yeah. We can graph it now. That's great. Okay, so now we've got to find out the equations of these lines. We do know that it goes up 8 over 15. So that means the slope the slope is 8 fifteenths. And the slope of this one is negative 8 fifteenths. Not perpendicular because it's not a reciprocal. And they go through that point, center point, negative 2, 5. So we actually could write the equation of this line as uh, 8x minus 15y equals, if you remember how to write equations of lines, uh, slope 8x minus 15y equals, and then stick in negative 2, 5. So that's negative 16 minus 75 is a negative 91 or and this one is 8x plus 15y equals um, uh, negative 16 plus 75 so negative 16 plus 75 is 59 there you go Good. So you could also write them as y equals mx plus b. So y equals 8 fifteenths x. And then you'd actually have to stick in negative 2 right here and 5 here. And you would come up with 59 fifteenths. And over here you'd have y equals ne uh, positive. Oh, that's a negative 8 fifteenths x, sorry. Positive 8 fifteenths x um, plus, or in this case not plus, yeah, plus 91 fifteenths. Excellent. Okay, so those are the asymptotes. And we have the points. And what do we need? We need two points, the asymptotes, and we need now the foci. So the foci, if you recall, hidden right back here behind these two dots around the, where it curves around. And how do we know how far they are? It's this hypotenuse right here that will fall right onto them. So 8 squared plus 15 squared equals c squared. That's 64 plus 225 equals c squared. That's 289 equals c squared. c equals 17. So it's 17 on the x. So we will go um, from here 17 down. So let's write the foci here on the x. So we're going to go negative 19, 5 and... Um, uh, 17 up would be a positive 15, 5. So that's the foci. That's one of those big points. Okay, now it's time for you to try them on the boards. To the boards! All right, here are a couple for you to try. Graph them, label two points, label the asymptotes, and label the foci. Go ahead and press pause spend some time working on them and then press play when you're ready to resume. 
Oh good, hope you've been able to put those in your video notebook. Here's how it goes. You'll notice this one right here, we're, we're trying to get this uh, standard form, x minus h squared over a squared plus, not plus, minus, we're doing hyperbolas, minus y minus k squared over b squared equals the 1. Well, here the y's are in front, so it's a little bit different because it, it won't open left to right, it'll open up and down. Let's see that work. So we'd have to have a, if x is 0, then we get an actual 12 and negative 12. Those are actual real points on the graph. So if we look at a graph like this, then 12 and negative 12 are actually on the graph. Good. Now on the x's, if we let y be 0, we get imaginary numbers, plus and minus 5, and they are not real points. So I'm going to put a little, z, little open circle there, and then um, let's draw that box. They have an impact on that ratio, still has an impact, but no, they are not real points. We draw the asymptotes through the box. Good deal. And voila, there is our graph. We're heading from the real points off towards those asymptotes. And now we need to find the asymptotes. In this case, what's the slope? Let's make sure we've got this. This is uh, was a distance of 5, and this was a distance of 12. So that's a slope of 12 fifths. And here's a slope of negative 12 fifths. So and they go through this point, 0, 0 in the middle. So this is y equals 12 fifths x. And this is y equals negative 12 fifths x. I love it when it goes through 0, 0 because it's just the slope. And, and that's it. All right. And then what else do we need? Oh, we need the foci. So the foci will be back behind the curves right here. But how far? We take this hypotenuse right here of this triangle that was made. So this 5 and 12 give us the slope of the line, and it gives the, us the legs of the triangle. So we're going to do 5 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. And that's 25 plus 144 equals c squared. c equals 169. Oh, c squared does. So c equals 13. Good. So that point right up there is 0, 13. And the point down here is 0, negative 13 as the foci. Excellent, excellent. Let's draw a line. This other one looks like it's going to be kind of big. All right, so what do we have here? Um, we've got to get it into this completing the square thing. So factor out an 81. We get x squared minus, let's pull this guy out, 486 divided by 81 gives us 6. So this is x squared minus 6x. Let's leave a little bit of a break so we can put the completing of the square right in there. And factor out a negative 144, and we get uh, y squared, you see, 2016 divided by 144 give us 14. So that's minus 14 y, um, and then that equals 17991. All right, let's complete the square. Half of 6 is 3, squared is 9. We've got to put a plus 9 there. That's 81 times 9 that we just added to this side of the equal sign. So we've got to add 729. Okay, that's good. Now over here, divide by 2 is 7, squared is a 49. So 49 times a negative 144. Negative 144 times 49. That is negative 7056. So minus 7056 is what we actually added to the left hand side of the equation over here. So we've got to add that on the other side. Okay, so let's add all that up and see what we get over there. Negative 7056 plus 729 plus 17,991. And it's 11664. So we got 11664 right here, and that gives us 81. This is now a perfect square. X minus 3, oh, perfectly squared. Love that. Minus 144, 
uh, y minus 7 perfectly squared. Nice completing the square there. And now we're going to divide everything by 11664 to get a 1 over here. 11664 and 11664. Excellent. All right, so if there's any justice in the world, these two will switch places and we'll have a 9 squared and a 12 squared. Let's see if it really works. Uh, 11664 divided by 81 is indeed 144. Good. So 81 times 144 is this. So this one will simplify to x minus 3 squared over 144 minus y minus 7 squared. The 144 and the 11664 will cancel and leave you an 81 equals 1. Whew! It's almost like doing eight problems here. So we got it down into the perfect form. So we now know that the center of all of everything we do is going to be positive 3, negative 7. Oh my word. I can't believe we went through this whole problem and did a mistake like that. I apologize. Go back up here. When you take a negative 144 out, it makes a positive 14y. Half of positive 14 is a positive 7. Won't change the positive 49, so I apologize. Go back and fix that. I messed up. I, I'm sorry about that. So the center is 3, negative 7. There we go. So 3, negative 7 is the center. So let's look at this. The x's are going to go plus and minus 12, and those are the real points. So on the x uh, axis, the x number is going to move up 12, so 15, minus 7, and down 12. So negative 9, negative 7. Those are the real points. Um, so let's graph those two points. That's what it says. Graph, label those two points. So 3, negative 7, right about down here. And that's the center. And so um, 15, negative 7 is going to be, yeah, up here 12. And then down here 12, like that. Okay, those are the real points. And the imaginary ones on the y-axis are going to go plus and minus 9. So it's going to go right up here about like that and right down there about like that. So those are not the real points. And so from here, let's go and uh, draw our little box. There we go. And that will allow us to draw our asymptotes. Oop, I missed that center point. It must not have drawn a really good box there. All right, so from our real points, we head off towards those asymptotes. Beautiful, beautiful. There we go. Love that. Okay, so there's our hyperbola. Um, now we need to label the asymptotes. So first of all, let's do this, and let's find out what the slope of these lines are. We went out 12 and up 9, so the slope is 9 over 12, which reduces down to 3 over 4. So, and this slope would then be negative 3 over 4. So we've got to write the equations of the line that have this slope and go through the point 3, negative 7, because they always go through that center point. So we could write it like, in standard form, 3x minus 4y equals, stick in 3, negative 7, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 28 is a 37. And down here, we would have 3x plus 4y equals, and then you would stick in the point 9 minus 28, and we get a negative 19. All right, so those are, you could also do y equals mx plus b, y equals 3 fourths x, uh, and that would be minus 37 fourths you should have. We'll circle that. Or y equals a negative 3 fourths x minus 19 fourths. And those are the asymptotes there. Okay, so we labeled the asymptotes, we labeled the two points, now we got to label the foci, which are back here behind the curves. And how far? Well, we have this nice thing, let's do it on this side. And we get, let me see, from here up to there, down to there. So we went back 12 and up 9, so let's see how far they are. 9 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. 81 plus 144 equals c squared, 225 equals c squared, c equals 15. So we go back 15 from 3, and you have uh, negative 12, negative 7, 
and go up 15 and you have 18 negative 7 and these kind of messy here but these are the foci and that's what it looks like that is everything to do with hyperbolas wow those are the huge problems they we bring in uh pythagorean theorem being able to identify perfect squares and then writing equations of lines they really bring in the entirety of this entire course so good luck i think you can now take on those few problems in your homework